Welcome back to this next video in which we are proving that the alternating group on the set of n elements is simple whenever n is greater than or equal to 5. So remember we're proceeding by a proof by induction and we're trying to show that the alternating group on the set of k elements is simple. Okay, uh, so we're doing this by a proof by contradiction and we are saying that we've got this normal subgroup, capital H, which is neither the trivial subgroup nor the improper subgroup of the alternating group on the set of k elements. Okay, and what we've so far been able to prove is lemma 1, which says that this um, normal subgroup, this non-trivial normal subgroup, uh, cannot contain any element that, uh, apart from the identity element, which fixes any of the elements of the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to k, i.e. none of the non-identity permutations in uh, this normal subgroup, capital H, can fix any of the elements 1, 2, all the way up to k. It cannot contain a 1 cycle, unless, of course, we're talking about the identity element. Okay, so, and to proceed then, what I'd like to firstly look at is a little corollary to lemma 1. Okay, so I'll call this corollary to lemma 1, and this will allow us to prove further restrictions, uh, which we'll call lemma 2 and lemma 3, and overall what we're going to manage to do is restrict it so much that we force this normal subgroup to just be the trivial subgroup, which of course is a contradiction, because we assumed it wasn't the trivial subgroup. Okay, so the corollary to lemma 1 then is that there cannot exist inside this normal subgroup. So there does not exist uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2, which are elements of this normal subgroup capital H, such that sigma 1 and sigma 2 map a certain element of the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to k onto the same thing, such that sigma 1 of i is equal to sigma 2 of i for any i, uh, or I'll just put for some i, is equal to 1, 2, all the way along to k. So I'm saying that there cannot be two different permutations in this normal subgroup capital H here, which map any one of the elements in the set 1, 2, all the way up to k onto the same thing. Okay, now hopefully it should be instantly obvious to you as to why that is. Okay, remember H is a subgroup, and what could we do um, if this was the case? Uh, but let me just spell it out anyway. Okay, so the simple way to prove this then is assume the opposite. Assume that we do have two permutations in this subgroup, capital H, that map a certain element, I, onto the same thing. Then, of course, what you could do is you could consider sigma 2 inverse of sigma 1 of I. Okay, and of course, uh, if sigma 2 maps I onto the same thing as sigma 1, then sigma 2 inverse will invert it. So, uh, what we can quite simply do is, if sigma 1 of i is equal to sigma 2 of i, you can imagine taking sigma 2 inverse on both sides. It will cancel this one, so you'll get i, and then you'll get on the other side sigma 2 inverse of sigma 1 of i. So this will equal i here. And of course, uh, this will equal sigma 2 inverse composed with sigma 1 in the uh, subgroup capital H acting on i, and because of the fact that this is a subgroup, sigma 2 inverse will be in capital H, if sigma 2 is in capital H, and then the composite of these two uh, will also be in H. So sigma 2 inverse composed with sigma 1 will be in capital H. And now here is an element then that fixes an element i, it's mapping i onto i, okay? And we know that that's not allowed uh, by lemma 1. We know that no element in this subgroup capital H can fix any any of the elements in the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to k. So the corollary to that is now uh, staring you in the face on this piece of paper, that there cannot exist any two elements in the subgroup that send one of the elements of the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to k onto the same thing. Otherwise, as I've just shown, there would be an element inside that subgroup that fixes the element that they send onto the same thing. Okay, right, so there's the corollary to lemma 1, and we're now going to use this uh, to prove lemma 2 and lemma 3, okay, which are going to restrict the subgroup further. So here now comes lemma 2. Okay, and I'll just underline lemma 2 in yellow here. 
Okay, so lemma two is that there cannot exist an element in this subgroup that, if you take its cycle decomposition, contains a cycle of length three or greater. Okay, so I'll put this here. There does not exist a sigma inside of H such that if you work out the cycle decomposition for this element sigma, so remember, everything's inside of the alternating group on the set of k elements, so we're all always talking about permutations. Okay, so we can take the cycle decomposition of this, so let's do that. And I'm saying that it cannot, when we take its cycle decomposition, have a cycle of length 3 or greater, so it cannot look something like this, a1, a2, a3, and maybe it goes even further than 3, and then it might have some other cycles here. Okay, so A1, A2, and A3, these are just representing elements of the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to K. So I'll just put that, the A1, A2, A3 here, these are all just elements of this set, uh, which contains the numbers 1, 2, all the way up to K. So this is just some uh, cycle here that is containing, uh, well, which has length 3 or greater. So the length here is greater than or equal to 3. This cannot happen. Okay, so what we've already managed to do is, by lemma 1, we have shown that any non-identity element cannot have a 1 cycle in it. Now I'm restricting it further. It cannot have a cycle of length greater than or equal to 3. Uh, in it, and of course the identity won't have uh, elements in that of this form in it, so, um, well, won't have cycles like this in its uh, cycle decomposition, so I don't need to bother saying any non-identity element there. Okay, so this will hugely, if it's true, restrict the elements that can be in this subgroup capital H. It will restrict it down now to just being, you can have the identity in there, and then you can have elements that consist solely of two cycles, and that'll be it, because it can't have a one cycle in it if it's not the identity, and it can't have three cycles or four cycles or anything bigger than that in it, if lemma two is going to be true, and then lemma three is just going to say we can't have elements that just consist of two cycles, and therefore we will have restricted it down to the point where we can say that it only contains the identity element, and therefore is just the trivial subgroup. Okay, right, so that's an overview of the strategy from here on in. Okay, so how am I going to prove lemma 2 then? Why is it the case that you cannot have a permutation inside this normal subgroup that has a cycle of length 3 or greater? Okay, well the reason is that we're assuming this is a normal subgroup. Remember, H is a normal subgroup. Okay, so if I conjugate it by any element, and sorry, I keep doing that, uh, writing G instead of AK. So H is a normal subgroup of the alternating group on the set of K elements. So if I conjugate it by an element of AK, I must get something else that's in capital H. So how can I arrive at a contradiction? Well, what I can do is I can conjugate this by some element. If I can show that I can conjugate this by an element of AK, then I know I'll get something that's back in capital H, and if I can get something that contradicts the corollary to lemma 1, i.e. something that maps uh, certain elements onto the same elements as sigma, but is a different permutation fundamentally, then of course I will have contradicted this being able to be in here by contradicting the corollary to lemma 1. Okay, so I'm going to show that if you do have elements of this form, I can break the corollary to lemma 1. Okay, and then of course you break lemma 1 and then everything's a disaster. Okay, so you can't have had elements of this form in. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to need some permutation to, um, to um, conjugate sigma by. So I'm going to take alpha sigma alpha inverse, and I know how this affects this. Remember from the prerequisite discussion, we know how conjugation by an element affects it. All it will do is it will turn this into alpha of A1, alpha of A2, alpha of A3, etc. So let me pick an alpha, which is an element of AK, so you must make sure that alpha is in AK, of course, okay? And I want it to be the case that alpha maps A1 onto itself. I also want alpha to map A2 onto itself, so I want it to fix whatever A1 and A2 are in this set. Okay, and they're just some elements of this set. But I want it to change our A3. I want it to not equal A3. I want, don't want alpha of A3 to equal A3. 
Okay, now you will be able to find some elements in the alternating uh, group on the set of K elements that satisfies this, I promise you. You could certainly find something in the symmetric group on the set of um, K elements that does this. Okay, you might worry that you might not be able to find an even permutation, but of course you would, because you could easily find a free cycle that does this. And we know that anything that consists of just a free cycle and then loads of one cycles uh, will always be an even permutation and therefore will always be in here. Okay, so even if you, you know, we're, we're working with k is greater than or equals 5, even if you were talking about k is equals 5, really we're working with k is greater than or equal to 6, but let's say you were working with k is equal to 5, okay, uh, then you'd still be able to find this, because you could have a1 and a2 fixed, and then you could have uh, the other three then involved in a free cycle. And if you were working with k larger than 5, so 6, 7, 8, etc., uh, you could just get this A3 involved, pick two other elements, you've got a lot to pick from, you've got K after all, okay, uh, it can be involved in a free cycle with them, and then fix all the other ones, okay, you can find, is my point, an element of the alternating group on the set of K elements that fulfills these requirements, that fixes A1, fixes A2, but does not fix A3, okay, so overall, all of that waffle was just trying to convince you that, yes, there will be an element alpha that you can find in the alternating group on the set of K elements that fulfills these requirements, fixing A1, fixing A2, but not fixing A3. If I then conjugate the element sigma by alpha, I must end up with something that's back in capital H. Okay, so this must be in capital H, but what would I actually end up with? What will this actually look like? Okay, so if I write out its cycle decomposition now, well, A1 will have been sent on to A1, so that's fine. A2 will have been sent on to A2, that's fine. But A3 has not been sent on to A3, so this will have changed. It will now be alpha of A3, and then I don't care what happens after that. Yes, other stuff will happen, but it doesn't matter. I've done enough now. Okay, so here I've got another element that is going to have to be in capital H. Okay, and I claim this breaks the corollary to lemma 1, because look, this is a different element to sigma, because a2 is sent onto a different element from what sigma would send a2 onto. Okay, however, they both send a1 onto the exact same thing. This one sends a1 onto a2, and this one sends a1 onto a2, and that breaks corollary to lemma 1, because no two elements in this subgroup, capital H, can send an element of the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to k onto the same thing. That's the corollary to lemma 1. I've just broken that. So the instant you put in an element that has a cycle in it, in its cycle decomposition, of length greater than or equal to 3, you cannot stop me being able to construct this alpha to conjugate it by to get another element that must be inside capital H, because it's a normal subgroup, uh, that would break the corollary to lemma 1. Okay, so now, what we can conclude now, is that any element that is inside this normal subgroup, capital H, cannot have in its cycle decomposition a cycle of length greater than or equal to 3. So look at where we got to now. Lemma 1 tells us that we cannot have any elements uh, inside capital H that have 1 cycles in them, apart from the identity element. And lemma 3 is now telling me that I cannot have any elements in this normal subgroup that have cycles of length greater than or equal to 3 in their cycle decomposition. That shows me that all elements, apart from the identity element, must just be made up of two cycles, okay? No 1 cycles, no 3 or above cycles, okay? And finally, lemma 3 is going to show me that elements of that form cannot exist, okay? So lemma 3, there does not exist, there cannot exist, an element which I'll call sigma in capital H, such that if we look at its cycle decomposition, it looks like this, consisting totally of two cycles. So A1 goes on to A2, A3 goes on to A4, and since we're working really with the case uh, 6 or greater, I might as well put A5 goes on to A6, etc. Okay, remember we don't need to prove it for A5's case because we've already done that in the previous video. Okay, so we're really only interested in K is greater than or equal to 6. Okay, right, uh, and of course the dot 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 infers that this could go on and on. Okay, right, so why can we not then have these elements that consist solely of two cycles in this way? Okay, well again, what we're going to do is we're going to find some element that's in the alternating group 
on the set of k elements to conjugate this by to make it break the corollary to lemma 1. And that's how we're going to disprove that in this subgroup capital H you can have elements of this form. Okay, right. Uh, so again, we are uh, relying on the fact that H is a normal subgroup of AK. Okay, so if we conjugate this by an element, we must get something else in H. Okay, now what I want to find is an alpha that I can conjugate this by uh, to make it break the corollary to lemma 1. And it has to be an element, obviously, in the alternating group on the set of K elements. Okay, so, oh, and again, remember, and just to make this utterly uh, explicit, these elements A1, A2, A3, A4, etc., these are all just in this set, um, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to K. They're just names for those elements. Okay, so they're all just elements of the set 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to K. And of course, they're all distinct elements. Okay, so these are all just two cycles of elements of the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to K. Okay? Right. So I will now want to find you an alpha which is in the alternating group on the set uh, of k elements that is going to conjugate this uh, to make something different from it that will have to be in capital H and which will break the corollary to lemma 1. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is just to have the transposition a1, a2 with the transposition a3 and a5. Okay, now you might wonder, well, what is the A1, A2 doing there? It's to make sure that it's in the alternating group on the set of K elements. You might think, well, why don't we just use A3, A5? The problem there is that that's just a transposition, so it's not in the alternating group on the set of K elements. It's in the symmetric group on the set of K elements, but not in the alternating group on the set of K elements. So you do need it to be like this, even though you might think this bit's pointless here. It's not, because that makes this a double transposition, uh, and therefore an element of AK. So here, this is certainly an element of AK. Now let's think about what would happen if I use this to conjugate sigma with. Okay, well, we know exactly how this works. We just need to relabel up the elements here uh, with what alpha is going to relabel them up as. Alpha is going to relabel A1 up as A2. Okay, so we'll get A2 here. It's going to relabel A2 up as A1. Okay, and that's why it's not really going to change that bit at all, uh, because, look, this is the exact same two cycles we had here. Okay, uh, but now here's the interesting bit. It will relabel up A3 as A5. It won't do anything to A4, so A4 goes on to itself. A4, if you like, is in a one cycle by itself. A5's gone on to A3, and A6 will again stay as it is, and all the rest will stay as it is as well. Okay, so here is alpha, sigma, alpha, inverse. Okay, now the A1, A2 cycle is exactly the same as it is here. Yes, I've changed the order, but that's the exact same cycle. A1 goes on to A2, A2 goes on to A1. That hasn't changed at all. Okay, but it is a different element, because look, A5 now goes on to A4 rather than going on to A6. So this is a different element. This is not equal to sigma. It must be in capital H, because capital H is a normal subgroup, and therefore if I conjugate it by an element of the larger alternating group on the set of K elements, I do get something that's back in capital H. But look, it breaks the corollary to lemma 1, because A1 goes on to A2, and A2 goes on to A1, exactly the way sigma does. And we know that there cannot exist two elements in capital H that send any of the elements in the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to K, onto the same thing. So this breaks the corollary to lemma 1, hence there cannot exist elements in uh, capital H that are of this form, just consisting of two cycles, and hence the only element that can be in there now is the identity element, uh, which is a contradiction because we assumed that capital H was not the trivial subgroup. Okay, so we have now uh, completed the proof by contradiction. Okay, going right back, there could not have existed a normal subgroup in the alternating group on the set of K elements such that um, it's not the trivial subgroup and it's not the improper subgroup. This was a wrong assumption. Okay, so we have to accept, therefore, that there was no such normal subgroups. Okay, so the only normal subgroups were the trivial subgroup and the improper subgroup, and therefore that the alternating group on the set of K elements is simple. Okay, so it's done. This proof is done. Okay, and now the induction all works fine. So 
because we know it's true on A5, we can now conclude it's true on A6. Okay, because it's now true on A5 and A6, we can now true it, conclude it's true on A7. Because it's true on A5, A6, A7, we can conclude it's true on A8. We can conclude it's true for An, where An is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, so we'll conclude this discussion here. Thank you for watching.